And tonight's Throwback Thursday, our historic commissioner, Jean Fernandez, takes us back to the start of the prohibition in the 1920s and its ties to the Rio Grande Valley. Brenda, you caught me coming for my music lessons. Sounds better since I had it tuned, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Um, the valley has a history that is very, very colorful in a particular regard. And we're talking about from the early 20s on up into the 30s. And when you start mentioning names like Capone, Bonnie and Clyde, Pretty Boy Floyd, we had them here. We actually had them. A lot of people dispute that, but there's enough evidence in order to really back that up. You got to figure when, what we were doing at that time. That was the start of the prohibition was in 1921. The whole boom for that element came shortly afterwards, real shortly afterwards, because these are pretty smart guys. They saw an advantage here. See, the valley came out real good by the prohibition on a couple of different reasons. Number one, we had a neighbor right behind us here that was Mexico. And in Mexico, they didn't have no stinking prohibition. And uh, they had loads of booze, they had the dogs, the greyhound races and all of that, and they had the roosters, the cockfights. And that caught the eye of the Chicagoans, and they said to themselves, hey, we don't need to bring booze from Mexico. Let's just go ahead and put a party town there. It was called Rio Rico, and we can make the money doing that way. They were already getting their booze from Canada. What are they going to do, go across this country with uh, Mexican tequila? No, not going to happen. Now let's get to the proof of how Capone was actually here. you got to bear in mind that Capone didn't need to hold his goomba's hands and whatever. I am certain that he came down here in the very beginning and he says, okay, this is my kind of place, and he set it up, then he left. You think he signed any guest registries in any hotels with his name? No, he didn't do that, so you don't find him in that regard. But there were loads of his buddies that were around the valley as all kinds of witnesses to that fact. There were houses where he supposedly either built, had built, or his buddies, his goombas, had uh, occupied during that period. And there's pretty firm proof in this. There's one in particular that's in Westlaco that is like a bomb shelter. Why do you think that would be the case? <laughs> proof that we have that Capone was on the border here. There's a five peso note. Oh, look who signed it. There's Alphonse Capone. And there's Pancho Villa. So this was done between 1921 and Pancho got it in 23. And who's in this thing? There's all kinds of governors and whatever else. They had a party across the river and they were opening up this project. What happened in Rio Rico? They set up a dog track. They set up all of the, uh, the houses, so that, uh, the liquor was flowing freely. They built a bridge. But one thing you got to bear in mind, that the real heyday of what Capone was doing on the southern border began in 1920-21, because that's when he took over what we call the outfit in Chicago. And he, there's proof of him coming through from uh, going into California, New Mexico, and Texas with that. But all of this was a period that, that society was straining from. There's nothing better than a, than a society full of law and order. And once that particular episode passed, then we went into a period whereby the farmers uh, made money, we started raising beautiful people, and the rest is history. For KVEO News, I'm Eugene Fernandez. For a look at other throwback day reports, head to valleycentral.com. We'll be right back.